And what we do is we, we look for the causes for, for cancer, the causes for neurological disease, for example, toxic load, or wrong metabolism, or intestinal problems, or just wreck situation of metabolic uh, functions. It changed dramatically within the last several years to, to all kinds of cancers. And the development of these cancers is much more rapid. So we have different causes. They are more acute, they are more uh, severe. And uh, we had a change over the last few years. We have more difficult cancer like uh, pancreas cancer, glioblastoma, brain cancer, uh, well, or metastasized uh, lung cancer and so on. And your patients are younger? The patients, yeah. The cases got, get worse and the patients get in average younger. How do you explain that? This comes from the environment uh, and the nutritional toxicity. I think the nutrition dramatically got worse within the last not only some years but last 20 years and the environmental load with uh, all these toxins like glyphosate, like pyrethroids, DDT and all these kind of, of agricultural toxins got much much worse and they are all of them are very cancerogenic. The nutrition changed dramatically. So what you're saying is that we now see the result of years of bad nutrition. Genau, exactly. Yeah. And um, what about the link between your intestines and cancer? <laughs> the, can the, the bacteria in our gut, we have more bacteria in our gut than we have the whole body cells. So they detoxify, they, they work like a blossom paper in your gut and they would, they would, and they are, uh, they would be adapted I ideally to, to your metabolism, to your body over, over millions of years. But now they, they are changed because of the antibiotics, because of the, the difference Uh, how food is produced and so on. This is one thing. And the second thing that's very important, 90% in adults T lymph cells, you know, the immune soldiers, so to say, in the body, the immune situation as a system is in the small intestine. It's about the small intestine, which is really wrecked in average of our patients. So in order to cure cancer and a lot of other diseases, we need to look at the intestines and we need to treat. In my, in my courses, I, I bang to the table and say to my students, cancer is an intestinal disease. Why? Is he crazy? Cancer is an intestinal disease? Yes, because the immune system, which is always wrecked in our cancer patients, measurably, it's in the immune uh, in the intestines the small intestines are the carrier of the immune system and the immune system in all our cancer patients is really decreased it's it's very weak and when we do a upbuild in our in our intestinal situation we can measure the increase of the t lymph cells on the NK cells, the natural killer cells. We test all these in our patients and we can measure the increase of immune system and the intensity of the cancer development reduces. It has really a relation to the nutrition and how we build up the intestinal flora. But if I see an oncologist in Norway, he or she would never tell me this. Why? because they follow the guidelines of treatment. And the guidelines of treatment which they have to follow, otherwise they get endangered. This is a political situation, unfortunately. It's not only in Norway, it's in the US, it's the same. In Germany, it's very bad. So they are not even allowed to do other things, alternative quackery things, they are not allowed. And And the so-called scientific processes are 
just based on the anti-cancer treatment with chemo and radiation and operation. They follow the guidelines and they have to follow. This is the very sad part. But even, uh, even um, the, uh, the knowledge now that we have about the intestines, um, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not very radical anymore, but still uh, this is something that is not implemented in the, in the treatment of cancer. Why is that? Why is it not becoming at least part of the so-called guidelines? <laughs> I don't know. I think there are multi-billion interests behind which influence even the universities that to maintain the population sick. Well, I know this is very uh, conspirative, it sounds extremely conspirative, but when I, I see my patients, I ask them, have you been uh, discussing other kind of approaches for cancer with your oncologist? No. Have you ever been tested for intestinal problems or intestinal situation? No. Well, but we test all of our patients, not only the cancer, we test all the patients with the intestinal comprehensive stool analysis and every cancer patient has a decrease of of intestinal bacteria, significant incre decrease, sorry, decrease of intestinal bacteria, but not only 5%, no, to 1%, to 5% of what it should be. So this, this intestinal situation is just so much weakened that the immune system, which would work in the body itself against cancer cells, because Immunitarily, they are recognized by good NK cells, but they are no more around. My cancer patients, they come across with an average of 5 to perhaps 8% of the NK cells when we measure what they would need according age and normal values. It's absolutely horrible. So if somebody says, the intestinal situation, nutrition, has nothing to do with cancer development, but even with cancer, how it, how it behaves when you have cancer. If they say there is no relation, well, it, they just show ignorance. Ignorance is very widespread in orthodox medicine. I, I'm super sorry about it. Our impression is, and we have, well, my big, uh, strength is that we have many, many, many cancer patients. We really have hundreds, and in, in the past I had thousands of cancer patients. So I see a lot of patients who were more damaged by chemotherapy than they were really killed by cancer. I know the, the numbers are, uh, well, it's, it's known that chemotherapy can, can damage the patient itself, uh, himself or herself. But how much number there is, it's not really uh, out in public. So how big percentage of those who so-called die from cancer actually die from the treatment? I'm not a statistical guy, I'm not a scientific guy. Uh, person, I'm just a practitioner. But my big strength is that I have a huge experience in treating cancer biologically. In my patients, unfortunately, I see a lot of damage by chemotherapy. And that's why we try to change the whole thing. I'm not fully against chemotherapy because the patient comes and the patient already has stage 4 cancer. We don't have the time to change his metabolism and so you eat differently now, but the cancer develops. So we have to do both things together. How do you do that? Tell me like practically how it's done. We work together with oncologists very well. We try to to adapt the dosage, not according the guidelines, but according to the individual situation of the patient. We measure the patient if they can detoxify. There are genetical tests who show us if they can detoxify the chemotherapy or if they just accumulate. And the ones, it's 
40% of the patients who have a detoxification deficiency. Orthodox oncology does not take any, uh, any notice of this, but they can't detoxify and they get cumulative toxicity and that's the ones who really they uh, get into damage. So we look how is the metabolization of the, the, the toxic treatment and in the same time we do much uh, metabolic treatment and we change the diet of the patient and we build up the, his immune system as much as possible. Meantime, why they have the treatment. So let's say I came to you and I said to you that uh, my doctor told me I have cancer, it is not curable, can you please help me? What would you have done? I tell them, dear patient, I could show you at least 100 cases who were told you have a lifespan of three, four months more and now two years later, four years later, they are still around and they are around even better than before. Not all the patients. I would never say I heal a cancer patients, but I can make their lifespan longer and I can make their life quality much better. This I can say and I can show many cases. And you start with the intestines, is that correct? We start day one with the with the immune system, we build up the T cell. Of course, day one we test everything, and then day one we begin with the treatment of the intestinal situation and of the immune si system, which goes very much parallel. We begin to detoxify, and we look how comes the patient across even before. Are there toxins like mercury, like cadmium, like uh, perfluoro? Organic acid, organic toxins, if they have this, the, all these cancerogenic toxins, then we have to detoxify because otherwise they would still work permanently. I think the, the high rate of reoccurrences in, in orthodox medicine comes because the causes for cancer are not researched and not, not found and not treated. I invite everyone, every researcher, every doctor who doesn't believe what we do, just come to my clinic and look the cases. We have, when I left the whole, the big clinic to make a more, even more specified clinic, we had 86,000 patient numbers and we, we can show the cases. I'm a practitioner, I'm not a scientific person, but I have Probably nobody else in Europe has more practice in biological treatment of cancer. These other patients, for example, ulcerative colitis or multiple sclerosis or uh, irritable bowel syndrome or borreliosis, Lyme disease, easy. Lyme disease is so easy to treat with biological means, without antibiotics. And so many diseases we have which are just a crux, we call it crux of the, of the orthodox medicine, they don't know how to, to treat. And so these are the, the cases of patients whom we can treat. How? By detoxification, by looking the causes of the, the background causes of the diseases. But it's always the same, it's so simple, we have to look widely for toxic load because toxic load nowadays is so giant in our population through nutrition, through environmental uh, toxicity and so on. This is number one. Number two is wrong intestinal situation and the intestines is the biggest organ and the, the fastest rebuilding organ and the detox, uh, you no, know, the detox of the body comes by, well is done in a, in a healthy person by the intestinal bacteria. Our patients who come to us, they have what they should have 
5%, 1%, 10% of the intestinal bacteria and they would detoxify the body. So this is no more done. Toxicity accumulates, the cells get weaker, the cells even get epigenetically changed to cancer, as an example, and they don't work anymore correctly. And there is the unconscious nerve system, the vagal nerve system, which is we have more cells, nerve cells in the gut than we have in the brain. So we have our butt, gut, brain, and this begins to reclaim. And then they have all these pains, chronic pain problems. They have the, they have the, the cramps. They have the, well, all these unclear symptoms. It sounds like uh, these diseases have something in common when it comes to cause. Exactly. The, the in common, of course, is toxic load, number one, and secondly, a destroyed intestinal situation. These are the two main important uh, things. Number three, my three pillars of treatment and evaluation is that the up building regenerative forces of the body. Once you are so weak, you have all these diseases, well, you would need new organ, you need, would need an, a new whatever it is. So, but they don't have these rebuilding forces anymore. And this has a lot to do with, with well, again, the intestines, but also what trace element, minerals, amino acids, good stuff which would help to rebuild new cells, what do you have in your body? So we have, due to wrong nutrition, depleted nutrition. We eat too much, but we eat horrible things. So it, you lose the, the, the capacity to build new cells and regenerate. So we have to build up the regenerative forces. That's the three pillars. Thank you. <laughs> Very welcome. <laughs>